Magic fans and Cavs fans, we are in for a very exciting and intriguing first round matchup between both of these squads. When you take a look at the Orlando Magic, this team has continued to overachieve and exceed expectations this season as one of the youngest teams in the association and they finished with a record of 47 and 35 the number five seed in the eastern conference and this team is now getting back to the postseason for the first time since the 2019 2020 season on the flip side this cleveland cavaliers team has a lot of internal expectations they've gained a lot of respect and notoriety over these last couple of seasons and it's well deserved jv baker staff who has been the head coach since 2020 for this Cavs team has now gotten this team back into the playoffs in back-to-back -back seasons and this Cleveland Cavaliers team is going to be looking to make a deep postseason run in the Eastern Conference this year but before we go ahead and do a full playoff preview of this first round matchup Magic fans and Cavs fans if you guys please could go ahead and drop me a thumbs up hit the subscribe bell to stay tuned for more Orlando Magic content that I do here on YouTube and make sure that you guys also go ahead and follow me Brett James and Orlando Magic HQ on all of our socials the link tree will be in the description down below so that you guys can go ahead and check that out. But let's go ahead and stop wasting time and let's actually go ahead and dive deep into this full first round playoff preview between both of these organizations. Now, these teams matched up four times in the regular season and the season series was split right down the middle two wins each a piece both on the road and at home for both of these organizations and i always like to talk about the opponent first so let's actually go ahead and dive deep talking about the cleveland cavaliers and what they've done this season now that the regular season has concluded cleveland ranked 20th in points per game 12th in field goal percentage 15th in three point percentage 17th in offensive efficiency they ranked 20th in rebounds per game 7th in defensive points per game 21st in blocks per game 19th in steals and they had the number seven defensive rating in the entire association and just like the magic the cavaliers dealt with a multitude of injuries this season if you take a look at donovan mitchell he only appeared in 55 games this season as he was dealing with a left knee bone bruise evan mobley only appeared in 50 games with an ankle injury and darius garland had 57 games that he appeared in with a broken jaw now, the thing that I think I love the most about this Cleveland Cavaliers team, if I'm being completely honest, is head coach J.B. Bickerstaff. He's obviously been the head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers since 2020. He has a record of 170 and 159. He's been to the postseason just one lone time with the Cavaliers, which was last year versus the New York Knicks as they lost in the first round four to one. But J.B. Bickerstaff and Jamal Mosley have a relationship that spans back nearly 20 years. And if you go back to 2022, talking about an article written by former Orlando Magic Sentinel beat writer, Kobe Price, he wrote a great article covering J.B. Bickerstaff and Jamal Mosley and the relationship that they have. Jamal Mosley had stated last season, he and I, as in Bickerstaff, are more than friends, more family, more brothers. I pull for him. I want to see him be as successful as he possibly can. He's got a great opportunity with a great group and a great organization that's given him some runway to continue to develop the team. I'm happy for him. Nobody's more deserving. And that's the kind of love and respect that you like to see around the association, especially between two head coaches that deserve their notoriety and their respect with guys like J.B. Bickerstaff and Jamal Mosley. Now, taking a look at this Cleveland Cavaliers team, talking about them more in depth, they were arguably the best team in the entire association in the months of January and February as they had a record of 20 and 6. Donovan Mitchell was playing at an MVP level, but after that the Cavaliers kind of tailed off a little bit as they started to deal with some injuries and hit a little bit of a wall. The Cavaliers finished the season 12 and 17 after the All-Star break and just a gut-wrenching loss on the final game of the season versus the Charlotte Hornets. Now, Donovan Mitchell we all know is a playoff riser and he's one of the best in the association at doing so Donovan in his playoff career has a record of 18 and 26 but despite that he averages nearly 28 points per game on five rebounds five assists shooting 43 percent from the field and 36 percent from three-point range you know Donovan Mitchell can get hot at any moment and he has shown relentlessly time and time again 
he is one of the best playoff risers in the game of basketball now it's not just donovan mitchell that leads this cleveland cavaliers team they have a great team from the starting unit to the bench unit this is a very well-rounded team you've got donovan mitchell you take a look at evan mobley and his versatility darius garland karis lavert max Struess, george niang sam merrill who i believe is actually a game time decision but a very underrated shooter off the bench dean wade who is going to be listed as out for the first game and isaac okoro and they've got a lot of great guys on this team evan mobley is one of the best interior defenders in the game of basketball you got shooters around donovan mitchell you got guys like darius garland who can facilitate you've got jared allen on the inside who could be a big body in that presence they've got a lot of great talented players now kind of wrapping up talking about the cleveland cavaliers evan damrell of the Cavs reported that donovan said that he's both 100 physically and mentally good and is excited to start this playoff run and let's also give donovan mitchell a little bit of respect for his words on what he said about the orlando magic the other day he said that he does not believe orlando overachieved he had stated that they are a young scrappy team they have a lot of energy a lot of guys who are really talented and you got to give jamal mosley credit for what he's done over there in orlando really good team got to give credit to donovan mitchell and what he said and this is one of the best young superstars in the game of basketball but let's actually go ahead and talk about now the orlando magic and what they've been able to do this season they are led by third year head coach jamal mosley who has been undoubtedly and undisputably a top three head coach in the entire association this season alongside timberwolves head coach chris finch and oklahoma city's coach who just won coach of the year mark dagnall now this orlando magic team does not have a lot of playoff experience i believe the only guys on roster that have been to the playoffs are joe ingles jonathan isaac and gary harris but nonetheless this team has had some very impressive marks this season they've tied their franchise record early on in the year with a nine game win streak this magic team now has their most wins in a season since the 2010-11 season so over a decade of basketball and this team has had their best winning season and this is now their highest playoff seeding as the number five seed since the 2010-11 season back when they were the number two seed and the orlando magic are led by former first round pick back in the 2022 nba draft paolo bancaro who just became the first all-star for this orlando magic team since nikola vucevic did it back in 2018-19 and in 2020-2021 paolo also became the youngest player in nba history at 21 years of age 154 days old to lead his team in scoring rebounding and assists there have been only four other players in the nba younger than 23 to accomplish that feat and that list includes michael jordan Giannis antetokounmpo maurice stokes and kevin garnett paolo bencaro has been nothing short of sensational this year putting up career high numbers as he had a sophomore surge Franz Wagner, third-year wing, has continued to impress and show his flashes of being an all-star caliber guy in the NBA. Jalen Suggs took a huge step up in his health, definitely played a role and a factor into that. And then you take a look at this team in the depth. Overall, they have one of the best defenses in the entire association. When you take a look at what Orlando's been able to do defensively this season, they were fourth in defensive points per game. 13th in blocks per game fifth in steals and they were third in defensive rating and you have to give a lot of credit to jonathan isaac who appeared in 58 games this season not only getting back to a fully healthy season for the first time in a long time but jonathan isaac has proven time and time again he is one of the best and most versatile defenders in the nba this guy can switch one through five and his defensive presence is felt everywhere and you've also got to give a lot of credit to a guy like Jalen Suggs, who appeared in 75 games this year. The head of the snake for the Magic defensively. He's the guy that has the responsibility of picking up full court at times. Always pressing and being an agitator on the defensive side of the ball, on the perimeter. And he has absolutely made his mark in his case to not only get this Orlando Magic team as a top five defense in the game of basketball, he has now made the case to get himself as an all-NBA defender, this team, and I expect him to make the all-NBA defensive team. But when you really look ahead at this matchup, I think that this is going to be a very good first-round series for a multitude of reasons. You've got a very good offensive team in the Cavaliers that can explode at any moment versus an elite lockdown defense that features two of the best defenders in the game, Jonathan Isaac and Jalen Suggs who, like I said, is more than likely to make an all-defensive team this year. 
Now, I do think that this will be a seven game series that features a lot of ups and downs. The Cavs have a ton of playoff experience compared to the Orlando Magic, so that's going to work to their advantage, but they also have a lot more pressure on them to win this series. Orlando, they're playing with house money, but don't expect this team to go out there and just lay down. They will play a very good and competitive series night in and night out. But Magic fans and Cavs fans, before I let you guys get up out of here, let me know your thoughts and your predictions with this first round series. Who do you think is going to win this series and in how many games I actually think that this is going to be a seven game series. This is going to be great growth and development for the Orlando Magic and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Like I've mentioned, they have a lot of internal pressure to make a deep postseason run. I think that this is going to be the most underrated first round series that we are going to witness this year in the postseason. Let us know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. But thank you guys again for sticking around throughout the whole video. Brett James, aka BJ, I'm out, y'all. And like always, let's go, Magic.